But he is good for this. Oh. Oh. In my own house, I've been working on my basement. So I, to clear up any confusion, I might be saying stuff that you know. I live in the East Coast. I live in Philadelphia. It's a very old city. Some of the houses are historical homes. But historical home, I feel like you're like, oh, cobblestone streets and, oh, you know. But some historical homes are just you know, homes that are over 100 years old. Nothing really important happened here. <laughs> but this house has stood for over 100 years. I don't know why, but that doesn't mean anything to me. I know that that's rude, but I don't care. I'm like, but I think it's because I don't understand the gravity of that. Like, if you live in Europe, all your houses are 100 years old. All of your houses are old as fuck. In the United States, like, the East Coast has a lot of old structures, and then as you move towards, like, the Midwest, everything's really new. When we went to Charlotte, North Carolina, South Carolina, isn't Charlotte a little bit in both? When we went to South Carolina, the city was so new. Everything was brand new. I was like, I love it here. It's really clean. And it didn't register to me um, because it's very new. Everything in Pennsylvania is old railroad rocks and stuff. Ugh. Anyway, my house is really old. And I have a basement. Now, if you live in Texas or maybe Florida, other places like that, you might not have a basement. Um, and a few people have messaged me from other, like, European areas and told me they don't have a basement. So, you, if you don't have a basement, usually there's just, like, I don't know, like, a soffit underneath your house to, like, tend to the pipes and electrical. In my house, we have a whole basement. But because my house is over 100 years old, the basement is just dirt. It's just fucking dirt. It is dirt with a house on top. It's a dirt hole. So, we had a crawl space, which is basically... You have your basement, you go down the steps, and in a lot of East Coast basements, that's where the washer and dryer is. When I lived in Texas, our washer and dryer was in the garage. We had our bricks redone, um, and we had them redone by a dude who actually had, like, scouted our house and really wanted to do the job, and was, like, our age. Everything fell into place. It was really cool. We gave him a bottle of wine when he was done. I thought that that was really mature of us. I don't know. You know when you're a millennial and you don't know how to do stuff like that? The whole time the guy was working on the bricks, he was like with his his crew. He was with like his friend, his co-workers, but they were so happy and laughing and the vibe was really cool. I like that. I like the idea of everybody getting along and it's not so serious. I feel like the work day goes better. The quality of the work is better when the team all gets along. So even though they were like rambunctious and cursing and all that stuff, I was like, yeah, get the bricks done. Good bricks fella, I recommend him. Gave him a bottle of wine. If you need bricks done in PHA, let me know. When you walk down the steps of our basement, there was concrete. And then behind the basement stairs is a, almost like a shelf, just like a very, small open area where you could crawl to probably service some pipes and electrical, but you could not stand. Behind our steps is an area of the basement that is only an access point. So this access point under my stairs uh, was dirt. You could run your hand, you could run your finger down the wall and you would get schist on your fingers. It's like um, rock, like rock bed. Like if you saw like raw like a mountain cut and you ran your hand down it you would have like sparkles on your hand so our walls were literally like cut into the bedrock of the earth and that was our basement so i didn't store anything in our crawl space because it was dead up earth there was spiders back there i had just been thinking a lot about how wasteful that might be just because it was like unutilized square footage. So 
I was on my, like, YouTube and streaming break, and I thought, I'm finally gonna do this. I'm gonna create, like, a storage room. Uh, not spackle. We, like, put concrete on the wall, which should have been done. You know, it doesn't have to be. Especially if you're not utilizing the space, why waste the money? Why invest in it? But my whole thought process was, it feels like a waste of money to have this area of our house that we don't use, like we don't utilize. I remember, like, growing up, we had a space in our ceiling. It wasn't an attic, like, you couldn't stand up there. But we had, like, a, just like a utility access point in our ceiling. And I used to be like, why don't we keep stuff up there? <laughs> Screaming, crying, shisting, throwing up. Tons of schist. So when is the tenant moving in? So here's the thing about the crawl space. It became a vibe. Once we spruced it up, you know, I say this in my video, but I started working on it. And whenever I start a project, John, like, sp like he gets involved in it. Like, I, I never have to ask. But if I start doing something, he'll come and do it. Like, I redid our railing out front. And he got home from work and finished it. Like, I didn't even ask. Also, like, let me do it. So I was down there, like, scrubbing the floor and, like, vacuuming the wall. I completely ruined my vacuum. Um, John told me you can't vacuum, like, basement dirt. I didn't know. I thought it was, like, normal dirt. Um, so whenever I turn on my vacuum now to clean the rest of my house, um, it smells earthy which i don't mind but also like a big plume of like dust comes out but then i vacuum that i'm already vacuuming um so i did ruin our vacuum but i was down there vacuuming the walls cleaning getting all the cobwebs down and like two days later john came home with all these bags of concrete and he just started doing the walls i was like okay yeah oh okie doke oh okay, so i'll okay yeah, so unintentionally, the space became like a really cool vibe. Um, it's super clean down there. I painted the floor and the wall with like concrete masonry paint. And it, re it just really became a vibe. It's awesome down there. I wanted it to be a storage room, but it became so vibey that I've really been uh, putting off like making it a storage room <laughs> damn it i've really been like every time i get a box of something to put down there i'm like maybe i could just get rid of it <laughs> but yeah it just it became a chill spot which was the like unfortunate consequence however once now that i have a space to put you know just like the odds and ends you really don't use every day like, I have a big box of shipping material in case I ever start that depop. So, it was good to take that out of the main space of the basement where it's tall enough for me to walk around and put it in the crawl space in the, like, storage room. Which I hope will alleviate the pressure of the, uh, the crawl space because it's really chill. Yo, please start that depop. I actually need to. Um... I have a lot of expenses coming up and taking off like two months of work wasn't great. Um, I started taking self-defense classes. My washing machine broke, so laundry's been tough around here. No mini bangs yet. I did do this. I told you guys I was going to do this and then I did it. Yeah, we have, a, we have a washing machine that is from 2006, old oldie i was 16 when that washer machine came out um but the components of the washing machine are all analog so we've been buying pieces off of ebay and fixing the dryer like piece by piece yeah every day i stray further from i'll start that depop one day i was cleaning out my basement though and i did sell a couple a uh, couple larger items on my instagram story and then i gave away a couple things I met a nice young lady and gave her my bike rack. We met up, I gave it to her, and then there was kind of just like a little delay. Like, what do we do? What do we do right now? 
Do I ask you anything? Do I ask you about yourself? <laughs> Gave her the bike rack and I was like, goodbye. <laughs> what do you do? Um, I sold one of my tables and I met them at a grocery store and we were in the parking lot. So there was a little bit of a, a hustle bustle, a little bit of buzz. So when they pulled up, um, after like a minute or so, another car had pulled up behind them to be like, come on, let's go. So it was like, we put the table in their car and then they left. I was like, what was your name? But I guess that's how it goes. I'm just a little sentimental or stupid, I don't know. Have you been selling clothes at Buffalo Exchange? Uh, Buffalo Exchange is a cool consignment shop, thrift store kind of thing. There's not that many of them. I thought that they, they are a chain, but there's not that many of them. Maybe there's like 20. If you live in a major city, you might have one. In Pennsylvania, we only have two. One in Pittsburgh, one in Philly. Um, Buffalo Exchange, if you've seen any of the memes, you go there with a bunch of clothes and they accept a few. Their website will have what they're looking for, like floral dresses, chunky filas. So if you have those items, they'll probably take them. But normally they don't take a lot. And that is because, nope, I have no reason. They'll take stuff like Balenciaga. And you're like, what? You, you have your like little Forever 21 cardigan from eighth grade that you're really trying to push on them. And the person in front of you sells them <laughs> Gucci Adidas collab. So you're like, oh, do you still want this? My Buffalo Exchange though has Shein, has um, Fashion Nova stuff. So I'm kind of like, where'd this come from? Where the fuck did this come from? This better be someone switching shit in the dressing room. <laughs> she in, she out. <laughs> yeah, I had some success at Buffalo Exchange. I had to make an appointment. Now, in Philadelphia, we have the Buff we have the Urban Outfitters headquarters. So that's free people, anthropology, right? Urban. Maybe one other thing. <clears throat> so it's generally a little competitive, maybe difficult to sell to my Buffalo Exchange because all of those people are bringing their shit in all the time. So it is lousy with Urban Outfitters goods. They did take a lot of my stuff though. I was pretty excited. Not all of it. I thought I could donate the rest to H&M, but they're not doing that right now. Or they didn't want to, whatever. I work at a resale store and the amount of Shein stuff we get is wild. It's crazy because Shein stuff is like so close to being single use. Um, yeah, I sold back a, con a ton of stuff. They didn't take any leather. Well, leather. I had like a leather vest and a leather jacket. They didn't take that stuff. They took all my denim and the graphic t-shirts. See, graphic t-shirts are like the only thing any of us wear anymore. So the graphic t-shirts, if I was able to explain the graphic t-shirt, they took it. Like I had a Stranger Things graphic t-shirt, but it was like a weird one. And then I had a Space Force graphic t-shirt. Hot Topic sent me this. Space Force is like that show, it has like Steve Carell in it. And the shirt was like Space Force, but it didn't have any other iconography on it. I watched like two episodes of that show, Poopy Diaper. Maybe it gets good. I didn't like it. Very surprised they signed on a season two. But Hot Topic had like a watch party and they sent me that shirt. And I was like, oh girl, that show sucks. At Bubble Exchange, they put it in the no pile. And I was like, oh, that's that Space Force show. They put it in the yes pile. They didn't take any video game or anime shirts. I was like, what else are we wearing? That's all we wear. That is all we wear. Um, but I do think it's because Walmart, Target are all selling like Naruto ramen shirts. So I don't know. They wouldn't take any of that stuff. However, I would be more likely to buy that second hand. But I don't know. I get the the like Naruto shirt at Walmart is eight dollars so i guess buffalo exchange really can't sell that if they sell it for five 
they give me 25 cents. Like, I don't know. 